Do you ever feel like you're just spending too much time scrolling through Instagram and Facebook and even Twitter? And you're like, man, I really want to take more photos and I really want good edits. But how can I do that if I can't take my camera everywhere? Well, what if I told you you kind of have a camera on you at all times with this thing and you can actually pretty easily edit them without any additional software. So today, that's exactly what we're going to talk about. One of my biggest missions in 2021 is to spend far less time on this thing. Because despite the fact that I'm connected all the time for things like work, for my Instagram, for friends and family, for live streaming on Twitch, everything I do has some level of connectivity online and you know on this I can check my metrics I can communicate with people it's very important to have one of these for sure but sometimes I can get a little bit too sucked into this admittedly and it has definitely sapped some creativity out of me. I mean I learned my lesson from last year and I let th too many things get in the way of my creativity and a lot of that I could have just totally avoided but what if I told you that it's still a good thing to have this on you especially if you're a photographer if you have a decent phone that's been made in the past five years, I'd say, you can get some really banger photos out. And I wanna to talk to y'all about doing in-phone editing of phone photos. Now, why would I wanna edit phone photos on the phone editor when I have Lightroom Mobile? That's a great question, because as much as I love using Lightroom, sometimes I just wanna do something really quick. The in-camera edits are pretty good. They have some decent filters you can adjust a lot of parameters like brightness, contrast, you can choose how much of the filter you drop on it there is. Is it as flexible as Lightroom? Not even close. But is it good? Yes. And that's why I want to teach y'all how I did this. The first thing I'm going to do is choose a filter because that's going to be the base of what I do. Now I kind of like the colors it already has so I don't want to mess with it too much. So I'm going to go with Vivid and then slide it down about a quarter of the way. That's typically what I do with a lot of these filters on the iPhone. It looks really good so far. Exposure, maybe just a hair down. Brilliance, I'll leave alone. Highlights, go down a little bit. Shadows, go up a little bit. Of course, this is all to taste, so you can go really high, really low, just to see what the range is. I'm gonna go up just a smidge. Contrast, go up just a smidge. Brightness, again, bring it up. It's this, it's an early sunrise. So this was flying over from Finland to Sweden uh, early one morning. Um, and I just wanna capture that kind of sunrise feel of like, oh, I'm tired and you're waking up and you're opening the door and you're seeing this. Black point. Now, black point uh, is basically if you've ever seen those fades in photos, it's essentially moving where the absolute black is on your photo. I'm going to leave it alone because I like how it looks. Saturation, um, maybe bump up a tiny bit because vibrance is where I'm going to push it. Vibrance is taking your most saturated parts of your photos and manipulating that, whereas saturation takes your whole photo and changes how strong or weak the coloring is. In fact, I might just, usually I'll bump down on saturation and then go up on vibrance. Warmth, this is a very warm feeling photo, so if I went all the way to the left, it'd be too cool, it's not daylight yet in this time. I'm gonna go warm, probably about halfway to half, so a quarter of the way, I can do math. Tint, so if you go all the way one way, you get a green tint, all the way one way, pink, I love that feel, but I don't need it that much, so maybe halfway on the tent. Sharpness, I don't push sharpness very much on my phone photos, really my camera photos too, but especially on phone photos because that digital uh, sharpness can be very noticeable and it's not very attractive. Definition, this is like your clarity slider. Um, you know, if you really want, it doesn't look too bad all the way up on this one, but I don't like messing with it. I actually like less clarity but you can't go in the negative on here. So I'm gonna do 20. Noise reduction, I don't think it needs it, but we can see. Yeah, I don't think it really needs it. Vignette, it already has kind of a natural vignette, so I'm not gonna to touch that. And you can click it to see the original, and that's quite a difference. So we're gonna hit done, and then that's that one. Now I'm gonna do another one, 
And this one I've actually already done an edit for, and I did a video in my Instagram reels actually on how I did this one very quickly, but I'll kind of talk through it. So we don't really get a lot of snow here in this part of North Carolina. So it's always fun to take photos. I was on my way to work, so I didn't have time to pick up my A7, uh, which isn't a bad excuse in my case, because I did have time, but I was on the, on the way to work, so I just took some photos. And uh, this one I like at my house, because my, my house is a really fun one to take photos of because of the tones I can get out of it. So I want something to be a little bit more warm in certain parts, but still capturing that winter wonderland cool feel. So again, I'm going to start with filters, and since I already did this one, I kind of know where I want to go with it. I'm going to do Vivid Warm, because if I just did Vivid, it's still a little too cold, so we're going to do Vivid Warm. Hit back the dial. Exposure, we're going to brighten it ever so slightly. Brilliance. I kind of like how it takes that away, so maybe just bump it just a little bit. Highlights, pull down. Shadows, bump up. So it gives a little bit more of that flat look, contrast. I'm gonna take that away too. Brightness up just a little bit, black point. There's not a lot of black in this, so I won't mess with it too much. Maybe fade it a little bit. Now I'm gonna start with vibrance. Usually you start with saturation, but I like to start with vibrance. So I'm gonna bump it up just a little bit. And then saturation, yeah, definitely wanna go down it just a little bit. Warmth, this is obviously a cool photo, but we can see what both look like. I'd say just a little cool tint, definitely more on the pink side. Sharpness, just a hair. Definition, uh, maybe a little bit. Noise reduction, don't need it. Vignette, I don't really like vignettes that aren't just part of the camera. Let's do that. And then this time, because I already did a crop in my previous photo ahead of time. Now I want to frame it better because this is probably a little bit too wide. So when you hit crop, if you want to freeform it, cool, but I want to keep it about the same ratio. So we'll click on the top right and you can kind of choose what ratio you want it to be. If you want that Instagram, it's three by four, four by five. Um, so I'm going to keep it three by four. And as you drag it, you'll notice I can move, but it doesn't really change um, where the, um, sides are. So I want to ca capture just a little bit of this and I like that blur so you can see where it is. I don't want to cut off my fence entirely because I could go extreme like this and just frame it in the corner which isn't too bad but I want to show off a little bit of my fence so maybe about right here. Drag it up. Let it sit for a second and hit done. And boom! I think that's a pretty good one. So I want to thank you all so much for tuning in on this quick tutorial on how I did a, some et phone edits on my phone. And if you have any other questions or if you thought I was being too vague, just ask me in the comments below. I'm always happy to clarify things because usually I ramble or I'll miss a point and I'll just kind of glide over something. I'm getting better at this tutorial process. But you all seem to like my uh, sports edit tutorial and you like some of my other tutorials. So I'm going to continue to do these kind of camera related ones, design related ones, just kind of a plethora of creative tutorials that I think that y'all could do pretty easily. As I mentioned before, I do live stream on Twitch. Right now, I'm staying consistent on Mondays and Wednesdays at around 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That can change a little bit because my life is a little hectic, but more than likely, you can expect it on those days. If not, you'll see on my social media posts, I will let you know if I can't stream on those days. As always, I'm KP. This has been another one of my videos, and I'll see y'all in the next one.